Yo guys, what is up? It is Nick. We are back and we are here to break down the NFL slate. This is Friday the 22nd, late at night here, almost about to hit midnight. Um, and so we're going to break it down today, give a little bit of perspective, and then depending on what news we get, I'll either break it down again tomorrow night or Sunday morning. We'll see how it goes and then I'll, I'll break it down from there. Uh, if anybody was interested what I played in cash tonight for um, basketball, this was it. This is, I think this is a $33. Yeah, this is the $33. Um, so I got a ways to go to catch up to the $33 cash line. What am I? 27 off of the cash line there. I might be able to, I might be able to get there. Um, gonna need Draymond and, um, Kuzma to have good second halves. Get me to probably 40, if Kuzma can get me to 45, maybe 45 for Kuzma and 50 for Draymond. I, th I think we could catch up and actually cash the $33, but, um, Let's move on, get into the NFL. Uh, so, we'll start off with quarterbacks. Russell Wilson, Cam Newton, still my favorite two at the top. Um, I've kind of written off Tom Brady, not going to be playing him in anything but G GPPs. Alex Smith out. Breeze out. Bortles interested, but I'll just find the 300 for Cam, so Bortles out. Rivers. See, the issue is, is I'm pretty much narrowed my core down of quarterbacks. So, it's going to be Russell Wilson, Cam Newton, Dak Prescott. So the guys in between, the issue becomes is I can just pay down for Dak or I can pay up for Cam. Uh, they're all like too close to one of those where it's like, well, there's no point. Um, I have a little bit of interest in Jared Goff, but probably just come down to Dak. Uh, I love Winston this week. Um, probably looking like he's going to be my fan duel cash game quarterback. He's 7,100 over there. Um, Tyrod, I do like Tyrod, but I probably won't go there. Marcus Mariota, I do like him this week in a must-win game for the Titans. Um, he knows he's played bad all year. He's talked about it, so I think, I think he'll, uh, I think there's a chance he, he puts together a really nice game. Other than that, you gotta come all the way down to Drew Stanton. I don't even know where he is. Drew Stanton, there he is. 4,500. Won't be playing him in cash, I don't think. I, I pretty much got my cash lineup set as long as certain players are out. So, Drew Stanton right now. Uh, I have a, I have a single entry GPP line. Um, I have a secondary cash line, and then I have my main cash line. If, if you want me to break it down, I think I have like, um, I have like a thousand on my main cash, three fifty on the secondary cash, and then seventy five on the single entry GPPs. Um, usually only play one cash line, but. Um, I wanted to split Russell Wilson and Cam, so the second the the main lineup right now has Cam, and the secondary lineup has um, Russell Wilson, and then the third line has um, um, uh, Drew Stanton uh, in order to fit more running backs. So let's go to running backs. Um, I've got a little bit more clarity on running backs as the week has gone on. So at the top, Gurley is my favorite. Or no, Zeke is my favorite, and then it's Gurley really closely. If Gurley was 8K, Gurley would be my favorite, but he's not. Zeke is. So Zeke is my favorite. He's locked in and loaded into all my lineups. Nothing is taking me off of Zeke. He will be in my lineups. Then it's Gurley. Gurley currently has cracked my cash game, so I've got Gurley and Zeke in my cash game lineup. Um, and then it kind of comes down to a group of guys. I really like Kenyon Drake. I really like Melvin Gordon. I really like Alvin Kamara, and I really like Kareem Hunt. I know I play, I never play Alvin Kamara, but the Falcons, as I've done more research, and I kind of looked around, and I looked at how they played them last time, and then how the how Atlanta played their last games. They've really been funneling to the, to the uh, running backs, the cast-catching running backs. I do still like Mark Ingram, but I would probably rank the rest of them with price factored in Gordon, Hunt, Kamara, Drake. Um, I think Casey gets up on Miami, so I think that kind of hurts Drake's production. Uh, Tevin Coleman, I believe, has cleared concussion protocol and is all good to go. I don't even think he's, yeah, he's not even, like, questionable. Um, so he should be good to go, um, which means that really hurts Devontae Freeman. Deion Lewis, um, I did like him, but after I thought about it, Bill Belichick and the Patriots have had nothing but good things to say about Mike Gillisley. They haven't had negative things. He's just been inactive because he wasn't as good as Burkhead, uh, White, and um, Lewis. And so that's the only reason he's been inactive. And so I think he'll be good to go in this game. He should pick up some carries. He should get the red zone work because he's the bigger back. So it's kind of taking me off of Deion Lewis. Uh, Joe Mixon looks like he's clear and ready to go. 
Yep, does not carry an injury designation into the game. He should be good to go. 5,100, I do like him. Should see his 23 touches again. Um, or 26. I, I would put him at 23, even though he... Because 22, 25, we'll, we'll, we'll median it out at 23. I expect him to see the 23 touches. I do like Theo Riddick in this game. Probably won't go there, but I do really like him. Um, the big thing that we're waiting on... We're partially waiting on James White news, because if James White is out... That helps Deion Lewis. He should become the primary pass catching back and also helps out Mike Gillisley. Um, Kerwin Williams is currently questionable with quadriceps and ribs. If he sits, it kind of comes down to if you want to take a risk on DJ Foster, the pass catching back, or what's his face, the re the rushing back. What's his name? Whew. Elijah Penny, I think. Where is is it Elijah Penny? I think it's Elijah Penny. Where is he down here? Gosh, is he? He's min salary, but I don't know where he is. I'm pretty sure it's. I'm looking for Elijah Penny. Yeah, here it is, Elijah Penny. I was right. Okay, Elijah Penny. He saw ten carries in the last game. Didn't see. He saw one target, but didn't catch it. And then, oh, where is DJ Foster? Thirty four hundred. He saw nine targets, four catches. So it kind of just. Who do you want? You want the receiver? You want the the rusher? Um, and then the big one, the gigantic one that came up since I last made a video is Samaj P. Ryan, who actually was going to be in my lineup, but he he said he'll be fine to play on Sunday with his groin, uh, but if he um, happens to sit, which Gruden hasn't ruled him in, that's just Samaj P. Ryan said he'll be good to go. Um, but Gruden obviously wasn't so sure, so he, he still carries that questionable tag. And uh, we'll see what comes tomorrow. If he goes ahead and sits, Capri Bibbs becomes the huge value play of the week. I really hope he sits because I love my lineups with Capri Bibbs. Um, Bibbs saw the four receptions in that long touchdown. Um, and then he also had two carries. But he'll be the lone back for the Redskins. So he'll have to play 3,600. He doesn't need much to pay that off. And so he becomes interesting. If he... If Bibbs... Go, or if... P. Ryan goes, it really messes up my lineups. I probably just go up to Joe Mixon from Capri Bibbs, and then I drop from Todd Gurley down to like a Melvin Gordon. Um, that's probably what happened. So moving on to wide receivers, we got a little bit of clarity here as well. Keenan Allen remains my favorite, followed by Michael Thomas, even though I think Atlanta takes him away. Michael Thomas probably not a cash game play for me, but I do really like him. Um... Larry Fitzgerald, I like him, but he's a little higher priced than I would like. Devin Funch is still questionable. If he plays and he's good to go, um, I like him a lot. If he sits, that brings in Demir Bird at 3,500. Uh, really like Robert Woods. Like the correlation in GPPs with Tyree Kill and the uh, defense. I think he might have a shot at a good, a pretty good shot at a touchdown this week on a return. Mike Evans, I still love Mike Evans. Um, I like Josh Gordon as the week has gone on. It sounds like no one's on him. Uh, so n nice tournament play, uh, and he's underpriced at 6,300 against a, not a great Chicago defense, I believe. Um, oh, what was the stat? Josh Gordon lines up on the right side 60-something percent of the time, uh, and then the Bears give up the most. It's either the most, like, top three most fantasy points to the right side main wide receiver the main outside wide receiver on the right side um, which is josh gordon 60 percent of the time moving on jarvis landry about to say if it come from cash probably won't play him doug baldwin nice gpp option as he's come down in price i like dd westbrook on the on the lag or on the uh, flop lag. Uh, I think he turns it around, gets back together this week. As long as Alan Hearns is out, Marquis Lee got ruled out. That's a piece of news that we got, so that's good. Uh, I still like Rashard Matthews at 5100, but I find myself either paying up at wide receiver or paying up into like the 6K range or paying down into like the 4700 range to Keelan Cole. Keelan Cole is um, he's fine either way if Alan Hearns plays or not, but it kind of depends. Deshaun Jackson also got ruled out. Um, today so that opens up Chris Godwin we'll get into him in a second but Alan Hearns still questionable um so we're gonna have to wait till Sunday for inactives to see Alan Hearns that's kind of the issue with him I can't talk too much about that but I still like uh, Keelan Cole even if Alan Hearns plays so we'll get into the two real value guys Demir or three value guys so we got Kendall Wright at 3800 
has seen an absolutely ridiculous amount of targets over the last two games, 24. Now, we all remember week one with Alan Hearns when he was chalk and he didn't get any catches to like the fourth quarter. Um, I still like him, but I think I like Chris Godwin and then the savings he provides more. Um, I still like Demir Bird, but he's kind of like third. If Funches is out, I really like Demir Bird, but uh, without the Funches news, Demir Bird ranks in third. Chris Godwin, let's go down to Chris Godwin, who is min salary. So Chris Godwin, mid salary, no Deshaun Jackson. Um, I believe the Detroit game is the one that DJX sat, and he saw six targets, five receptions for 68 yards, 11.8 will more than pay off this salary, so that's what I'm looking at. Um, DJX hasn't, DJX, I don't think DJX sat the Jets game, I think he just got those targets in the Jets game, um, but he's got, um, he's got the ability to take, uh, deep passes to the house, so he right now is in my cash game lineup, uh, and then the tight ends, kind of pretty simple here. I've got it narrowed down to four guys, pretty much. Gronk, Kelsey up top, mostly just reserved for GPPs. Olsen in the middle, GPPs. Um, and then Cameron Brait, 3,300. Um, granted, he plays OJ Howard on IR and uh, um, DJAX out. Uh, Brait should see five, six targets at least, if not a lot more. And then let's see here. We've got... We've got my boy, one of my favorite players of all time, checking in at 2,500 is Antonio Gates. And to be fair, at 2,500, he catches one pass for 10 yards and a touchdown. He pays value. Uh, so <laughs> he doesn't need much, and Gates will get looked at in the red zone with just him and Keenan Allen really probably as the two major pass catchers in the red zone uh, with Melvin Gordon also. Uh, so I, I And the Jets have been absolutely killed by tight ends, so... I'm a, I'm looking for a big game from Gates. I, I'm I'm hoping for a 15 pointer. I'm hoping, you know, it's it's getting late in the season. Um, I'm hoping that they'll they'll give the they'll give the old man some looks. Um, not like a ton of looks, not anything crazy, but um, you know, maybe get him six targets or something like that, and see what Antonio Gates does with with six targets. So moving on to the defense, and then we'll wrap this up, and then. Um, I'll give some closing thoughts on some different things. So, Jaguars up atop. It seems like all these defenses are priced up, even like the Bears against the Cleveland. So, my lock and load defense is the Lions at 2,900. I'm having no problem fitting them in against the Bengals that just don't care. The Bengals have given up. Um, I'm pretty sure they've just thrown in the towel. It's over. They don't They don't care anymore. And so, I don't know. I'm, I'm going to roll the Lions. They've still got something to play for. They need to hammer Cincinnati, and I think they get it done. I think they just absolutely lay into them um, for, for three and a half quarters at least. Um, and I think Detroit comes to play. Uh, if I'm wrong, I'll take my L on this. But I, I, I'm, ho I'm, I'm thinking that they're going to come out strong, and I'm looking for double-digit points out of the defense. Maybe maybe not a shutout, but multiple points. Um or minimal points given up seven or less probably hopefully in the six range maybe a couple field goals and then uh, hoping for uh potentially uh an interception a couple of sacks maybe a pick six something like that that's what i'm hoping for out of the lions defense I, I people are saying it's redskins jaguars chargers and no one else but i do really like the the lions so probably gonna take a stand on the lions defense and just play them 100 percent um if they're not gonna be owned uh, which it sounds like they're not, uh, and so I'm going to take the stand there and let it ride. So if you go through here and you select the games, there are some games that I've written off, so these games are all good. Uh, only the defense in the Cincinnati-Detroit game. Other than that, I've written that game off pretty much. Um, Detroit-Kansas City, just the Kansas City side. I, I guess Jarvis Landry and Drake are interesting. Um, Buffalo-New England, I'm actually kind of off that. I'm not going to really play anybody there. Atlanta, New Orleans, you can play people there. Uh, Jets, Chargers, just the Chargers side. Titans, Rams, uh, just for the sakes of going through this, I'm going to write it off, except for Gurley. I guess I'll select it for Gurley. Denver, Washington, this is only if pre -bib, or, or if P. Ryan's out, because I think if P. Ryan plays, he's not 100%, so I think they split the carries. So I'll leave that unchecked for now. Uh, Jacksonville, San Francisco, right now I'm going to write it off. Uh, I do really love D.D. Westbrook and Keelan Cole, but I don't have them in any of my lineups. So 
I'm not doing anything there, so we'll, we'll, we'll play it as if I'm not using it. Arizona, New York Giants, you can use Drew Stanton, but other than that, we're going to keep that X'd out. And then Detroit, Dallas, or er, Detroit, Seattle, Dallas. So that only leaves 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 12 teams, so about half of the teams eliminated. Uh, that kind of helps me out right there. Kind of limits the player pull down and uh, lets me look at it a little bit more organically. Obviously, I have interest in guys in these games, but this is kind of my major interest is in these guys. But guys, that's going to do it for this episode. I hope you all enjoyed. Drop a like if you did. Subscribe if you haven't, and I'll catch you all in my next video. Peace out.